solid state fixes the biggest limitations of lithium ion, energy density, charging speed, lifetime, and safety. But here's the reality. Until today, there are no vehicles in production using solid state batteries, not one, not at scale, and not shipping to customers. Today, we are making history because Donut Battery is the world's first solid state battery in production vehicles shipping to customers. A recent post on X dated January 5th, 2026 directly confirmed that Donut Lab's all solid state, non-toxic, thermally stable, high performance battery. The technology is scalable while the sodium ion based composition of the battery doesn't require lithium and cobalt to function. Let's be clear from the outset. If even half of what Donut Labs claims is true, this is not merely an incremental improvement in battery technology. It represents a fundamental breakthrough compared to everything that the industry has relied on for more than three decades. No lithium, no rare earth metals, a five minute charge, a lifespan of 100,000 cycles or up to 100 years of use. That combination alone explains why this announcement has sent powerful shockwaves through the battery industry and why a small, newly emerging startup like Donut Lab is being monitored extremely closely and with a high level of caution by major players such as Toyota, Samsung SDI, and QuantumScape. Whether they openly admit it or not, this achievement has already placed Donut Lab at least four years ahead of them in research. The question, then, is why we should trust this semi-solid state battery when Donut Lab has never made public any patents related to it. And is this truly a purely chemical battery intended for use in electric vehicles, or is it simply a pseudo-supercapacitor or a hybrid battery? Now, for those with technical expertise, especially those who have followed battery research since the days of nickel-cadmium cells and early lithium-ion batteries, skepticism is not only understandable, but necessary. The battery industry has promised revolutions countless times. Most never made it beyond the laboratory. Some never truly existed at all. So rather than reacting with blind excitement or outright dismissal, the only rational approach is to examine the contradictions directly. And interestingly, when we do so carefully, some of the most controversial aspects surrounding Donut Lab may actually point to a technology that does not neatly fit into our existing mental models, rather than one that is simply impossible. The first shock, is this even a battery? The most heated debate to emerge from CES 2026 centered on a core allegation. That Donut Lab's device may not be a true battery at all, but rather a pseudo-capacitor or a hybrid energy storage system. At first glance, this criticism sounds serious. A full charge in five minutes and a lifespan of 100,000 cycles are classic characteristics of capacitors, not batteries. Traditional electrochemical batteries rely on the slow diffusion of ions into electrode materials. That process takes time and inevitably degrades the structure. By contrast, capacitors store charge on surfaces and can operate virtually indefinitely. So critics raise the obvious question. If it behaves like a capacitor, then it's simply a capacitor. But in reality, while capacitors do charge quickly and boast long lifespans, they fail catastrophically in one critical area, energy density. Even the most advanced supercapacitors rarely exceed 10 to 20 watt-hour per kilogram. Donut Lab, by contrast, claims an energy density of 400 watt-hour per kilogram, nearly twice that of Tesla's best cylindrical cells and far beyond what LFP or sodium ion technologies can currently achieve. If Donut Lab's battery truly employs an amorphous ceramic structure, such as amorphous titanium dioxide, then the usual trade-offs may no longer apply in the same way. That alone could explain the extremely high cycle life without resorting to speculative or science fiction physics. The most emotionally charged moment in the entire Donut Lab story did not come from an abstract debate about chemistry or energy density, but from what people physically saw, or more accurately, didn't see, at CES 2026. For an industry that lives and dies by demonstrable proof, the absence of a working battery cell on one of the world's largest technology stages immediately set off alarms. Visitors saw modules, housings, and carefully designed enclosures, but no cells actively charging, discharging, heating, or powering anything in real time. For engineers, researchers, and longtime observers of battery hype cycles, this absence triggered an almost instinctive reaction. 
history has trained the tech community to associate empty showcases with overpromised miracles, and the comparison to past scandals such as Theranos emerged almost automatically, not because of malice, but because the pattern felt familiar. When a company claims to be weeks away from shipping a revolutionary product, yet cannot display a single functioning unit under neutral observation, skepticism is not only reasonable, it is almost unavoidable. However, stopping the analysis there would oversimplify a far more complex situation. Donut Lab's stated objective at CES was never mass persuasion of the general public. From the beginning, the company framed its strategy around original equipment manufacturers, not retail consumers or journalists. According to both Donut Lab and reporting by Electrek, fully functional battery packs have already been shipped to OEMs and authorized research institutions under strict non-disclosure agreements. These partners are reportedly allowed to test performance metrics such as charge time, cycle life, thermal stability, and power output, while being explicitly prohibited from opening the cells or publicly disclosing their internal structure. This distinction matters because it reframes the CES controversy from a question of existence to a question of access. The batteries, if Donut Lab's statements are accurate, are not missing. They are simply not publicly exposed. From a competitive standpoint, this approach is not as irrational as it may initially appear. In the battery industry, especially when claims involve a departure from lithium and rare metals, revealing internal structures even briefly can erase years of intellectual advantage. Reverse engineering is not speculative. It is guaranteed. Donut Lab's CEO openly acknowledged that competitors will inevitably buy Verge motorcycles, tear the battery packs apart, and analyze every layer, particle, and interface. His argument is not that this will not happen, but that delaying it by even a few weeks matters. In a field where first-mover advantage can determine supplier relationships, licensing negotiations, and long-term market positioning, time itself becomes a strategic asset. From this perspective, the absence of live demos at CES looks less like concealment and more like a calculated trade-off between transparency and survivability. What ultimately matters, then, is not what was displayed on a convention pedestal, but whether independent, technically competent third-party test results emerge once those NDAs expire. Donut Lab has publicly tied its credibility to that timeline, repeatedly emphasizing that external verification is already underway. That is a risky position to take if the technology does not exist or does not perform as claimed. Companies planning to quietly fade away rarely anchor their reputation to an imminent verification window they do not control. This does not prove Donut Lab's claims are true, but it does weaken the narrative that the CES display alone constitutes decisive evidence of deception. The controversy becomes even more intense when the discussion shifts from what was shown to who is making the claims. Donut Lab is a small startup from Finland, with a team reportedly numbering fewer than a dozen technical staff. In contrast, Toyota has spent decades and billions of dollars developing solid-state battery technology, accumulating thousands of patents, and building entire research divisions around the problem. Toyota still projects limited production timelines around 2027. Against that backdrop, the idea that a tiny startup could leapfrog one of the most technologically disciplined companies in the world feels almost offensive to common sense. The disbelief here is not purely technical. It's deeply psychological. We are conditioned to assume that progress scales linearly with funding, manpower, and institutional weight. Yet history repeatedly undermines that assumption. Lithium-ion batteries themselves did not emerge fully formed from the largest corporations. They arose from specific breakthroughs in materials science, such as layered oxide cathodes, graphite intercalation anodes, and electrolyte stabilization, often pioneered by small research teams before being industrialized by giants. Scale did not create the chemistry. Scale followed once the chemistry proved viable. Toyota's struggle with solid-state batteries has been less about theoretical feasibility and more about manufacturing realities, particularly the brittleness of crystalline solid electrolytes. Cracks, dendrite formation, and catastrophic failure during cycling have plagued even the most well-funded programs. If Donut Lab's approach genuinely avoids crystalline structures altogether by using amorphous ceramics or nanostructured materials produced through unconventional processes like nanofluid printing, then it may have sidestepped Toyota's core bottleneck rather than outperforming it in a traditional sense. That would not imply Toyota failed. 
it would imply Donut Lab took a path Toyota did not prioritize. Unconventional paths, however, almost always look suspicious in their early stages. They violate expectations, contradict established trade-offs, and lack the familiar signals of legitimacy. That suspicion intensifies when the claims involve eliminating lithium entirely. Lithium dominates modern batteries not because of marketing momentum, but because of fundamental electrochemistry. Its low atomic weight and high electrochemical potential enable high cell voltage, which directly translates to high energy density. Remove lithium, and conventional battery equations collapse. This is why sodium ion, zinc-based and aluminum-based batteries consistently trade energy density for cost, safety, or durability. Against this backdrop, Donut Lab's assertion of a lithium-free battery achieving up to 400 watt-hours per kilogram appears to contradict the accumulated knowledge of the field. Unless, of course, the underlying mechanism is not operating under the same constraints. If energy storage relies less on bulk ion diffusion and more on surface-based redox reactions across massive internal surface areas, the traditional voltage-centric framework may no longer be the dominant factor. Pseudo-capacitive behavior, particularly in nanostructured and amorphous materials, allows ions to bind and release rapidly without penetrating deep into a crystal lattice. Titanium dioxide, long dismissed for low voltage in conventional designs, begins to look very different when engineered into amorphous nanostructures that can breathe under ion flow. Combine this with a solid-state architecture that eliminates flammable electrolytes and tolerates extreme temperatures, and the absence of lithium becomes less inexplicable, though still extraordinary. Critics often ask why such materials were not exploited earlier by major chemical companies. The answer may lie less in ignorance and more in practicality. Identifying a material's theoretical potential is not the same as turning it into a manufacturable, scalable product. Entire classes of materials remain underutilized for decades because fabrication methods, cost structures, or process control are not yet mature. History is full of examples where breakthroughs only became viable once manufacturing caught up with theory. Still, one omission continues to fuel legitimate concern. The lack of disclosed volumetric energy density. Donut Lab has been vocal about gravimetric energy density, but noticeably quiet about watt-hours per liter. For electric motorcycles like the Verge models they are supplying, physical size matters as much as, if not more than, weight. A battery that is extremely light but bulky may fit a motorcycle frame yet prove impractical for cars or consumer electronics. This silence does not invalidate the technology, but it does raise questions about how universally transformative it can be. Importantly, this is not a detail that can remain hidden for long. OEM testing will expose volumetric inefficiencies quickly, and automakers are not known for overlooking packaging constraints. All of this explains why Toyota and others like it should be paying close attention even while remaining skeptical. Toyota is not concerned because Donut Lab has already won the race. It is concerning because Donut Lab may be running on a different track altogether. A lithium-free, ceramic-based, solid-state energy system that delivers high gravimetric density, extreme cycle life, rapid charging, and thermal resilience would reshape supply chains, manufacturing economics, and geopolitical dependencies, even if its volumetric density is merely adequate rather than revolutionary. Decades of lithium optimization would suddenly look less inevitable and more contingent. In the end, skepticism remains not only justified but necessary. Extraordinary claims still demand extraordinary evidence. Donut Lab has not yet provided the level of transparent, independently verified data the scientific community expects, and that criticism is fair. At the same time, the internal logic of its claims is no longer pure fantasy. There is a coherent, if unconventional, material science narrative that connects the dots. The coming months will determine whether that narrative survives independent scrutiny or joins the long list of battery miracles that quietly faded away. If Donut Lab is wrong, the industry will absorb the lesson and move on. If it is right, the lithium era may not end with a bang, but with a quiet shift. And companies like Toyota already understand what that would mean. What's still holding solid-state batteries back? Lithium-ion batteries have enabled the modern electric vehicle revolution, but they are approaching fundamental limits. Current cells rely on liquid electrolytes, flammable organic solvents that allow lithium ions to move between the cathode and anode. 
While effective, this design introduces well-known problems, fire risk, thermal runaway, dendrite growth, and gradual capacity degradation. At the same time, global EV adoption is accelerating, driven by climate pressure, government incentives, and long-term energy security concerns. As demand grows, so does strain on lithium supply chains, manufacturing costs, and recycling infrastructure. Incremental improvements to lithium-ion chemistry are no longer enough to meet long-term performance, safety, and sustainability goals. The defining feature of a solid-state battery is the replacement of the liquid electrolyte with a solid material, typically a ceramic, glass, sulfide, or oxide-based compound. All other core components, anode, cathode, and ion transport, remain conceptually similar to conventional batteries. During charging, lithium ions migrate through the solid electrolyte from the anode to the cathode. During discharge, the process reverses, releasing electrical energy. The absence of liquid fundamentally changes the battery's behavior, unlocking advantages that are difficult or impossible to achieve with liquid electrolytes. One of the strongest arguments for solid-state batteries is safety. Liquid electrolytes are volatile and highly flammable. When a lithium-ion battery is damaged, overheated, or overcharged, it can enter thermal runaway leading to fires that are difficult to extinguish and often violent. Solid electrolytes, by contrast, are non-flammable and have much higher thermal stability. They are far less likely to leak, ignite, or degrade under high temperatures. While no battery is entirely immune to mechanical damage, solid-state designs significantly reduce the probability and severity of catastrophic failure. This improvement alone has major implications for electric vehicles, residential energy storage, aviation, and consumer electronics. Beyond safety, solid-state batteries promise a major leap in energy density. Today's lithium-ion EV batteries typically achieve around 250 watt-hour per kilogram and roughly 700 watt-hours per liter. Solid-state batteries, by comparison, are projected to reach close to 400 watt-hour per kilogram and over 1,000 watt-hours per liter. This increase comes from multiple factors. Solid electrolytes allow for thinner separators, reducing inactive material. They enable the use of lithium metal anodes, which have much higher theoretical capacity than graphite. They tolerate higher voltage cathode materials without rapid degradation. For electric vehicles, higher energy density translates directly into longer driving range, lower vehicle weight, improved efficiency, and more design flexibility. Smaller battery packs can deliver the same range, reducing cost and improving aerodynamics. Charging time is another critical area where solid-state batteries show promise. Liquid electrolytes limit how quickly ions can move without generating heat or causing structural damage. Fast charging in lithium-ion batteries accelerates aging and shortens lifespan. Solid electrolytes generally exhibit higher ion conductivity and better structural stability, enabling faster charging with less long-term damage. So given the ongoing challenges in cost and large-scale manufacturing, should automakers continue to invest heavily in solid-state batteries or focus instead on optimizing lithium-ion and hybrid technologies in the near term? Please share your opinion in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla Bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.